Bert Ola, uh, welcome over here. I think the, the strangest place I've ever had an, an interview before. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, uh, we're at, at uh, the Crowd Dialogue Conference in Helsinki, and because it's quite hot, uh, tiny, and uh, dark inside, so we're here outside in the backyard of the, uh, of the venue. Uh, you also gave a talk today, uh, and when I read the program, I'm, I was really uh, interested in, in, in what you're doing because we already met uh, mm -hmm. uh, two times, the first time in Copenhagen, second time in Vollerim, uh, near the Arctic Circle, mm -hmm. and now back again, again in the Nordics, uh, in, in, uh, in, in Helsinki. So what is it, uh, what, you, what you do? Yeah, it's a, <coughs> it's a brilliant time to be here, so thank you for inviting. Uh, it's always a question, what are you doing, and I try to find out, I guess it's an, um, a journey for me as, uh, in itself. But mainly I'm connecting people and actors to do something good in society. That's my big passion and I have done it for the last 10 years more or less systematically. Both a little bit from an academic point of view. I started as a PhD researcher at School of Business in 2007. And out of that it has emerged into something I do also outside university. But a little bit both from an academic and a practitioner perspective. Okay, but it's quite uh, still quite broad. And I think also the challenge in, it, in this interview is because we are both experts to, to talk the language that mm. also everybody yeah. understands. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 That's that, 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 yeah. that, that, that So what are you concretely doing right now? Yeah, on the on the one hand, we are setting up an uh, initiative in Sweden called Inclusive Business Sweden, where we try to build uh, since we have uh, we need new markets in in europe and all over the world of course and and to address the question of poverty so we are building an ecosystem for innovation for swedish innovators entrepreneurs uh, the whole uh, institution the innovation agency and so forth are supporting this uh, that's one initiative we do it at Lund University and a number of other actors around. Uh, that's one initiative. And the second we are doing is that we connect social innovators around the world in uh, connecting them at events like today at the Crowd Dialogue. And there are many uh, events like that for organizational learning, for learning ex exchange of experiences. How do you start business and so forth? And social innovators. So when you, when are you a social innovator? For yeah, if you say, uh, for me, the main difference between a traditional innovation or social innovation would be that uh, innovation or the entrepreneur, the social entrepreneur behind the social innovation, is addressing an environmental or social issue as motivation. That's why. That's where you really can see. The difference between maybe the traditional entrepreneur, if you want to say so, where you more find a mar market solution. Uh, this is, you go, for example, you travel to another country and go to a cafe and you see this type of cafe would be cool to have in my own country. And uh, maybe you see that they would come to buy some uh, things at the cafe. Here it's, you have beggars on the street or you have uh, climate issues or whatever and you see, I want to solve that. So uh, that's also some a little bit of the trick or the challenge with social innovation or social entrepreneurship that it's maybe not a market solution around it, but you see the problem and you want to solve it. But do you then also see that there are, uh, well, what I see uh, also in, in the clarity economy, there are really two, two, uh, two types of, mm. of, of people joining it. Mm. Uh, the entrepreneurs mm. who are really going to mm. for, for the capital, uh, mm. uh, also the venture mm. capitalists. Mm. The other side, there are the people who are really social, uh, mm -hmm. deeply uh, mm -hmm. uh, driven to, to, to solve things. Yeah. But in the end, I, I really don't believe when you look at a, lo a long term sustainable model mm. into the really entrepreneurial uh, venture capitalist way, because mm -hmm. then you're really looking on short term and not mm -hmm. on long term. Mm -hmm. But I also see the more yeah, uh, uh, deeply uh, motivated mm -hmm. entrepreneurs mm -hmm. struggling. Uh, mm. with their business model mm. because they are doing really great things they're mm. connecting people mm. just like you mm. but in the end they're really having a problem mm. uh, in paying mm. their mm. rent so yeah, yeah. And, and that's yeah. also not a, a yeah. model uh, do you also see models where these two rules uh, uh, come together because in the end like with uh, uh, entrepreneurships mm. uh, an entrepreneur and investors i think it, it's okay that mm. they are being mm. rewarded for the mm. risk they take mm. but mm. there is of course a 
difference between rewarders and mm, mm, getting mm, really rich mm, and only short term. Mm. Yeah, still most what I can see at least in, in Sweden or the Nordic countries that it's it's hard to build the, eco, the new system and to survive at the same time because uh, for various reasons I think one is that at least in Sweden we have a very strong welfare system where we have built support structures for the traditional economy and and it can be difficult to build a new structure when you already had type of structure at that place so it's not easy to to break in there and uh, and uh, i think most of the actors they they do a consultancy on the side or something to survive as an entrepreneur yeah um, and and uh, but, but do you also see uh, nice examples of of new ways where are these new uh, initiatives are, are being empowered just they like they build the infrastructure for the traditional way they are coming but very early stage at least in sweden maybe also an observation or reflection that it's quite function it functions reasonably well still just to look out here in helsinki today with quite good weather and Nice music in the background. Yeah, some music in the background, and of course there are beggars outside, but you don't see the big, the climate issue with flooding or or it's not uh, what I feel the. But, but, but do you then think that we are, uh, uh, I'm from the Netherlands, it's, it's mm. also a, a country, yes, mm -hmm. there's poverty, but uh, most people are living a really decent life. Uh, mm. do, do you think then the, the sense of urgency? The sense uh, of urgency is not, there. is not there. No, exactly, it's not there. Uh, in a way, it's good because it functions reasonably well, but you get a little bit scared when you see what's happening around the Mediterranean Sea now or other places where you can, uh, because we don't have solutions to solve this, and we have built up uh, our own uh, institutions here that works, and you get hatred, uh, immigration issues, and it's um, yeah, we, it's not. It's still a hard thing to 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 really get it going. Yeah, but if you change, it's it's it's, it's always a hard thing, especially mm. in, in 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 a big environment where everything mm. is going mm. going mm. really 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 well. But do you see in other countries in the world where? the standard of living is, is lower do, do you see that that it's over there is is, is going faster is, yeah. is it different yeah in this uh, a traditional social innovation in sweden could be for example we in north sweden or the in the middle of parts we lack uh, a market because we are too few people mm -hmm. so you need to find the service points where people the growing the population are growing older and you don't drive the car or you are just one person in the car or whatever mm -hmm. and in that type of uh, solutions to solve this if you want a decent living at the same equal standard as other places in sweden someone need to support that and in a swedish case that would be the the local municipality through tax money or so but if you go to us or many other places it's an entrepreneur who do exactly that solution and and start to sell it. Yeah. So it's more entrepreneurial driven the social innovations in uh, in uh, countries like U US, UK and and so, so I think it goes f it moves faster there. Yeah, okay. Well, I think the question is, is and also is it a good thing? But first we're going to move mm. because mm. inside they are making some noise. We're going mm. to move to another place and then Okay, great. We, uh, do yeah, the question yeah. again. So, now we're here uh, yeah. really on the street. But my question was, uh, is it a good thing? Well, what you say is, okay, um, in the US, uh, mm. m many problems or services are solved by uh, businesses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in Nordics, it's about the government. But you say, okay, we're going to maybe to, uh, to model where businesses will uh, take this role. But do you think that the, the, that's, a, that's a good thing? Mm. Yeah, it needs to be, I guess, a balance. We have a big... Uh discussion right now in Sweden about should uh, the schools be privatized for example very typical uh, public services and uh, it's a hard some 
on the one hand, what you can see around businesses growing up that there are more certification systems like B Corporation, B Labs, where you can't act uh, as you want. So there might be control mechanism growing up, even if you are more business oriented. And that's, I guess, also good with the technology development right now that you have methods where you can uh, be transparent, you can increase the transparency around what business do. Before maybe it was easier to hide your activities, but you can see if it's a catastrophe around a, a, a building collapsing in Bangladesh or something, mm -hmm. you can't, uh, the, the crowd or the, the, the people will be there and react and your brand or your reputation will, will uh, lose uh, attraction. Yeah. So, that, so maybe there are some complementary mechanisms that, if you run it as a business, can uh, at least to some extent uh, balance, counterbalance that. Uh, yeah. that thing. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And, and, and what you uh, uh, all say, okay, uh, there are some things worrying me. So, so uh, what, are you, what are your biggest worries in, in, in what's happening right now? In general, uh, in, uh, if we take the Swedish perspective again, or I think Europe, that Mediterranean Sea that was before like the place where you went to for swimming and bathing and was very positive, now it's becoming a little bit like a dead sea where you have uh, all the, the problems with the conflict zones around the world, which at least yesterday I heard on the BBC maybe go back to the, the Syria crisis, go back to the water conflicts in 2011, which we now start to import into Sweden and other countries in Europe. Yeah. So, uh, so it's like, it's coming closer, the, the global challenges. Yeah, yeah, and I think uh, when you're going to, especially when you're uh, watching many things uh, on YouTube, mm -hmm. you can uh, see many things going wrong. But mm -hmm. And, 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 and then the other side, what are the things that give you the energy? Because uh, uh, what, yeah. what motivates you? Uh, it's the people. <laughs> the people, uh, all the great stories you can see today, uh, all good things that maybe because before was filtered. I'm not an expert in that, but I think media fields has been focusing on the bad stuff and not the good stuff and suddenly you can look for that yourself, you have the opportunity. So uh, I see that's a very positive, that good initiatives can be amplified. So um, I find that, 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 that's where I find motivation. What role has, has all these new crowd developments uh, in the things you're doing? Uh, well, all of what I have been doing since 2006 is about crowd and relations from the, if you say, the, the, the old model where people came together and in a restaurant or in a cafe or, and build, or maybe build a bilateral agreement between different actors like in, uh, in the oil industry. Uh, but now you can do this online, which uh, will ha has a profound effect on, uh, and I think will have even more in the future where you lower the cost of finding people but also that you can increase the value of connections because you can find interesting people or talent to a very very low cost so it's even more exciting to 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 see this uh, and and, and uh, it is uh, it is also one of the biggest changes uh, you've seen since you started in 2006 because mm -hmm. uh, it's only nine years, uh, mm. but many things uh, happened and changed in nine years. Yeah. Ah, well, uh, outside in, in, the, in this, like here, you have uh, the passionate people who are really a startup, or uh, they are part of this emerging field. But if you go back to the local municipality or something, things seem to move in another speed. So that can be a little bit. Uh, yeah, you need to have patience, basically, uh, like yeah. two parallel spaces. And you're traveling uh, a lot, uh, so mm. uh, uh, you're also spending quite some money on, on mm. traveling mm. other mm. things. Mm. So what is your business model? And did you also or also find for yeah. yourself a, a sustainable model that also worked for, for, for yeah, your Yeah, right now it's uh, basically social uh, consultancy around this field. 
So if it's uh, about measurement on impact, that's a big question. How do you measure this all, all this social good or environmental good? Also mapping the landscape for who are the actors, because the innovation agencies or regional development or local authorities, they need to learn a little bit about this emerging field. The pressure starts, even if it's small, it starts to come for them as well. So you can help them. So that's type of traditional consultancy model around this uh, emerging space. And, and uh, how do you measure the impact? Uh, the, I, I think there are, there are different ways of uh, impact. Uh, my personal motivation is when uh, a company come back to me and say thank you, because uh, now we can do business that we couldn't do before. Uh, so that's like intrinsic motivation. In a local neighborhood, if you are going to more work over time, you can maybe work with does the trust increase in the neighborhood over time, but then you need, of course, much longer horizon. But uh, that's the type of uh, impact you come back when uh, someone say this, uh, this has been helpful and I can develop my business or I took an ID to next stage or so. And, and, and when you were measuring uh, the impacts uh, uh, as a consultant, Mm. Uh, and what way uh, can you then really quantify the impact of, of, of so what far doing? most of the time it's uh, it's the old system the impact is so institutionalized in the old system European Union we how many networks have you built how many people have been participating and so forth so still ingrained from the old but you have new type of impact measurement, social return on investment, where you can try to... It's In one minute it's maybe difficult to explain, but what would it cost if I didn't do this? And if I take this action and uh, try to, to measure that over time and find alternative costs yeah. and, and to add that and see. In the end, is it, is it cheaper? The, the new solution than the solution that the municipality already had for, so, for taking care of a, a problem. Yeah. If you can do it more efficient, has that a lower cost than the municipality or a taxed, uh, taxed based actor has done. So what you do is you also help them to look at the bigger picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today we call it in, in this field social impact bonds or pay for success. And uh, that's where social innovation is coming strongly in the Nordic countries and at least in the Western society. And you can say that the municipality, region or state, they have a budget for taking care of the challenges, mm -hmm. unemployment, whatever, disabilities, problems with uh, your body or health issues. And I have a budget post for that. And if you find new innovations that can solve that, Mm -hmm. to a lower cost than the municipality have, then at least it's a return back in economic terms. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really good to, uh, to, to, to keep looking for new ways to, mm. to measure. And so you're now uh, uh, on the road for, 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 for nine years. Mm. So let's say uh, when we talk again in, uh, 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 in nine years, so mm. that's 2024, mm. so mm. really far away. What do you want to have re reached by then? Uh, I think this field is, I think it has, it will definitely have matured. I think uh, the, the challenge we have now will be profoundly deeper than we uh, see now. So the, the awareness and uh, the maturity of the market has grown a lot from this. It will be, not be a niche anymore. It will be part of uh, the way of doing business. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, that's very important. Mm. But uh, how step. far, I don't know. Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's see. Mm. So I guess uh, we'll be talking to each other earlier than uh, in nine years, mm. but uh, thanks for the interview. Thank you.